Alrighty boys, welcome back some more West Ham Manager mode. As promised in the last episode, here are the stats more in depth, more in detail of the players that we've signed. Luis Pedro Cavanda, the right back. Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna look at these in more detail, uh, you could pause the video if if you wish, if that's something you wanna do. 77 overall, Fernando. I'm, I'm going through these pretty fast because you know I don't wanna be stuck in this screen for like three minutes either. So like I said, you could pause the video, but you just saw Mohamed Salah. You see, you're seeing Jesse Rodriguez, although his form is poor. I don't think it's poor anymore. I recorded this before I actually played a game with him um, and uh, his form was poor, but I don't think it's poor anymore. I think it's just uh, okay or something. But um, yeah, Jose Maria Jimenez, 20 years old, 72 overall. This guy is going to be like the next Diego Godin or better um, in Atletico de Madrid now here at West Ham with us. Kingsley Coleman only here on, on loan uh, from Juventus. 19 years young and uh, yeah, he, he's already looking promising looking like a future star Raul Jimenez uh, one of the late uh, arrived, you know arrivals here at the club uh, Fabian Scher the last signing that we actually we actually were able to close man Fabian Scher I'm hyped about these signings boys. It's time to put them on the pitch. Let's do it Yes, sir. We're visiting Crystal Palace with our new signings on the pitch. Now, you guys were commenting in the last video to change the numbers, and I didn't do that before this game, but I promise you in the second game of this episode, you will see the numbers on the new players. Like Fabian Scher is going to be number four. Raul Jimenez is going to be number nine. Um, Jesse is number 11. Uh, I think Mohamed Salah is number eight. I mean, I changed the numbers around. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I fixed that. It wasn't in this recording, but I, I, in the next game, you'll see that the numbers are changed already. So right here, Crystal Palace. I mean, the slide, the, 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 the computer, the legendary computer is just so damn slide tackle happy. It's a problem with FIFA, in my opinion. Um, you know, they just want to slide tackle all the time right there. They get a red card for a dumb slide tackle right here. Niang, look at that. Oh, baby, what a golazo and by Niang. Or Niang. Some of you guys, I think someone commented. I used to say Niang, and then someone said it was Niang. So, I, I forgot. I don't know. I'm Niang, Niang. It's probably Niang, Niang. I don't know. He takes the shot from outside the box. What a golazo, baby. Give this guy an informal second goal of the Barclays Premier League and the first half was extremely damn boring man we only had one shot you're gonna see it in the stats right now um they only really had one shot of real danger they were out possessioning us for whatever reason they were just holding the damn ball but not doing anything with it which is extremely frustrating right here Fernando our center defensive mid sending in the cross somehow it falls to Valencia and he put up a very very bad terrible terrible header right here they make a crucial mistake it falls to Niang or Niang and he takes the shot the save from the goalkeeper we're putting on the pressure Valencia with another chance Valencia taking the shot and the goalkeeper once again his third save of the game 75th minute Mauro Sarate with the ball Mauro Sarate looks to Valencia he beats the goalkeeper to the ball 2-0 in the 76th minute I mean this is game this is a wrap look at the collision I don't know how no one got injured I mean it was a bad collision between Valencia and the goalkeeper. But Valencia beats him to the ball with a nice little slide tackle. Or it wasn't really a tackle. It was a slide shot, really. And uh, we win this match, actually, 2-0. Fabian share number 34. I, I said it later in this, in this episode, you're going to see I changed his number to number 4, not 34 anymore. Here are the end of the match stats. Not happy with this game because... You know, with 10 men, we were supposed to out-possession Crystal Palace, but they were really just holding the ball and not doing anything with it, which is extremely frustrating, but it is what it is, man. So, on to the Spurs. The Spurs are really good in this game, and I knew this was a very, very tough match. Even though we're at home, we just beat Manchester United at home. That I mean, they're a hard team to beat, man. The Spurs just play very, very fast-paced football. I'm not sure if they kept everyone... Uh, you know, compared to last season, I don't know who left, I don't know who got there, but it is what it is, man. Right here, Niang hits the post, and Fernando is there, right place, right time. This is the thing that I like about this center defensive mid. He's new here, but uh, Sung, our, our previous center defensive mid, Alex Sung, who returned to Barcelona on loan, um, or from his loan, he wouldn't push to attack, man. And Fernando, this guy, he, his work rates allow him to go up there and, and add to the offense. And that's one thing that I really, really like about him. He doesn't go crazy, though. He loses his position sometimes, but not every single time. Right here, Jetro Willems trying the shot from long distance. 
not much again just like in the last uh, game in this episode not much action in the first half these games were actually boring unlike the Manchester United game that one was really really entertaining once again we lose a little bit of the possession war but we had a little bit more shots they had two shots two on target but nothing really to worry about in the second half though they started turning up the heat man right here a, a chance not a very very good chance the cross wasn't well wasn't done well and uh, they didn't get a, a very good shot off right here this was a good shot and adrian responds he was the most valuable player of the barclays premier league in the last season he, he's showing that he's going to be stellar in this season as well right here beautiful pass to M by young and M by young baby puts the two nil in the scoreboard's 53rd minute what a pass from Jesse Rodriguez. Here you're seeing him once again. He was getting his shirt pulled. Still able to get a great, great pass over the top. And Mbai Neyoung, I mean, just boop. Just a little boop. A little boop around the keeper, man. Uh, third goal already. In the third game, he already has three goals in the Barclays Premier League. Last season, he only had a few less goals than the top goal scorer, which was Ener Valencia. So we had a great attack with, with both of those lethal strikers. And I'm glad that we were able to keep him for this season. Right here, the shot from the Spurs. And Adrian still remaining like a beast, man. Another chance for the Spurs. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this beautiful counterattack. Three versus one. I go to Raul Jimenez. Jimenez looks to the center of the pitch. She has Ener Valencia. Easy, easy. Go back to Jimenez. The shot. What? I I, I didn't see anything. That, that, that last play just didn't happen, right? It, it just didn't happen. Do you did you see anything? I didn't see anything. What the hell was that miss from Raul Jimenez? He had his second goal of the season. And we choked it so damn bad. Seven shots, three on target. We defeat the Spurs, though. Three games. Three wins. Mauro Sarate does not have one offer. Mauro Sarate doesn't only have two offers that we reject. Mauro Sarate doesn't only have three offers. This one from Juventus, a very good offer. Mauro Sarate has four offers that we've just rejected. Insane. Two days later, we have a Capital One Cup match against Everton. The second squad is going to get some minutes. Thank you guys for watching. Likes greatly appreciate it. Catch you guys on the next one. In life, in football, one must decide of two paths to take. Follow someone else's footsteps or risk everything to create your own legacy.